Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to talk about the next race at Darlington as the Cup Series continues. What's up, Jim? I can be nothing but great right now, Greg. It's so exciting to have actual sports and cars back on the track for real. Another race coming up on Wednesday. The Xfinity Series is running Tuesday, so I'm kind of, you know, at least relatively on cloud nine. Uh, so this, things are pretty good here. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, man. Having sports back, no matter what the sport is, makes me feel good. I'm excited. NASCAR, uh, people are, a lot of people are having fun with that over the weekend, and it'll continue, of course, on Wednesday for the next race at Darlington. So let's begin with your favorite DFS play here on Wednesday, and, well, it makes sense. You like recency bias, and the person that most recently won at Darlington was Kevin Harvick. So he's your favorite driver on Wednesday. Yeah, it definitely feels point chasey to go with Kevin Harvick, but there is also a direct advantage to having him won that race on Sunday from a DFS perspective. And that advantage is that he's going to start 20th on Wednesday. What the Cup Series is doing for qualifying is they are inverting the top 20 drivers. So Harvick won, he starts 20th, the drivers who finish 20th will start first. That's huge because for this race on Wednesday, we want to find drivers starting further back. The Wednesday race is shorter, being 500 kilometers. And when a race is shorter, we are incentivized to find drivers starting further back who can get us upside via place differential. And you're not going to find many better options than Kevin Harvick there coming off that win. They have confirmed they're going to use that exact same car that they used on Sunday. So we want to use drivers starting further back. Kevin Harvick is starting 20th in the exact same car he used to win on Sunday. I think that that makes it really enticing and really hard to go anywhere else than Kevin Harvick at the top end. He had one of the best cars on Sunday. Uh, if you look at my betting model, he does lead that model by a pretty good chunk. Uh, he was leading it before Sunday's race, so it's not just because of Sunday as well. So I think Harvick stands out. If you want to pivot, I think that Joey Logano is interesting starting near the front, but should have good laps led upside and good finishing upside. And then also Kyle Busch, starting behind Kevin Harvick after some issues on Sunday. Both those guys stand out. But for me, the top-end guy you need to roster is going to be Kevin Harvick. Like I said, it makes sense. The guy just won this past Sunday. You look at Jim's betting model, and he's one of the favorites here. And that point and that place differential that you get on FanDuel going 20 to hopefully one makes Kevin Harvick certainly one of the favorite drivers you got to put in your lineup on Wednesday. Well, if you don't like Kevin Harvick because, hey, he's not going to win two in a row, Maybe you go with the person that finished in second, and that would be Alex Bowman, who's starting, well, inverted. He's starting 19th on Wednesday, and hopefully that place differential will come into play for him as well. Yeah, and I think that Bowman, a lot of the value here shows the value of actually watching the race on Sunday. I'm not like a grind the tape truther, but if you watch that race, you could tell that there were kind of three drivers who seemed to be the class of the field. And those were Kevin Harvick, Alex Bowman, and Brad Keselowski. And Bowman will start 19th. He is also very cheap at $10,600. And referencing the betting model once again, Bowman ranks fourth for me there. And he's 10 6. Meanwhile, every driver who is ranked ahead of him is $12,200 or more expensive. So you're getting really good value on a driver who has pretty good odds to win this race. There have been two races prior to Darlington this year that have been sem somewhat similar to this track. Those were at Fontana and at Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, Bowman had a chance to win, but had a late caution kind of nip him in the bud there. Then in Fontana, he wrecked the field, and he won the race uh, pretty handedly there. Then we had that race in Darlington on Sunday where Bowman once again was crazy fast, as were his teammates at Hendrick Motorsports. So I think Alex Bowman starting 19th is a cheap way to get major place differential upside, and he could get you a win as well. So he gives you a high floor due to where he's starting, gives you a massive ceiling as well, you're not breaking the bank to get there. I think that Bowman is definitely a driver you want to get to and could be a part of a really good balanced build, allowing you to get his teammates. We'll talk about here in just one second. Alex Bowman price just here at 10,600 allows you to do a lot of maneuvering in your lineup, a really fairly balanced lineup rather than the stars and the scrubs. Bowman in a good spot, according to Jim's betting model, and obviously has raced well here this season, including on Sunday at Darlington. Bowman seems like an obvious choice to put in your lineups. Always an obvious choice, at least to me. It's Jimmy Johnson, who was racing really, really well on Sunday before a crash kind of did him in. He was leading the pack uh, at the time. Of course, it didn't end so well. He's going to start in the 38th spot, so kind of similar, right, um, based on place differential. If you get him in there, knowing the type of driver that Jimmy Johnson is, you really can score a lot of points in, in that way. 
Yeah, absolutely. We were slobbering over Harvick because he's starting 20th, but Jimmy Johnson's starting 38th. So the place differential upside there is massive. And as you said, he was leading that race before that wreck occurred. So we know that he can, you know, run well and finish well. And that's a key. But it's also, again, kind of like Bowman, it wasn't just Darlington where Johnson ran really well. He was also good in Fontana which is another track with heavy tire wear. That's a good thing for him. He also had a seventh place average running position in Darlington last year. Veterans seem to do well on this track in general. Kevin Harvick is an older guy. He won yesterday's race. Johnson was running really well before that crash. So I think that what you're getting here is similar to Alex Bowman. He is a cash game building block with monster upside. You don't get a lot more place differential potential than we had with Jimmy Johnson right here. He was running really well before the stoppage this year. Obviously had a fast car once again on Sunday. So it kind of just lines up really well. The only detriment to Johnson is that he will be super popular because everyone's going to go this way. But honestly, I don't care all that much. He is still someone I try to get overweight to relative to the field just because there is a reason the chalk is the chalk, and it's because he is the objective best play in the field. So $10,000 Johnson, a guy you build around for cash games, and you try to get overweight on in tournaments because – Sometimes it makes sense to swallow the chalk, and I think we're here with Jimmy Johnson. This is going to be one of those instances. Yeah, you don't always want to go with chalk. I understand that. It's not fun. It's not exciting. But Jimmy Johnson, price is just $10,000. Starting in the 38th spot, the type of driver that he is, the type of car that he drives, Jimmy Johnson's going to be in everybody's lineup. But everybody includes you. So he's got to be in your lineup as well. We know popular he is. We know how not sexy it's going to be. But Jimmy Johnson belongs in your lineup on Wednesday. Let's move on here. Now, away from the top plays for a moment, and let's move on to William Byron here. He's priced at $9,000. He's starting right around Jimmy Johnson here at the 35th position. Why do you like him on Wednesday? Yeah, so we said that Jimmy Johnson wrecked a, at the end of that opening stage and did not win it. The guy who won because Johnson wrecked was William Byron. And what's impressive about Byron winning that opening stage is that he actually started that race effectively 16th. It was technically 18th, but he moved up a row with Kyle Busch, uh, you know, starting in the back of the pack. So started 16th, worked his way forward, and was running second before that Johnson crash. That shows you just how good this car was for William Byron. He eventually, though, in the second stage, he wrecked as well, got in the wall, did wind up finishing the race, but was kind of limping around for the rest of the way. But now... He's going to start 35th, all the way back there with Johnson, and he's a little bit cheaper as well. This is the third time we've seen William Byron have a really good Carl in Darlington, but not converted into a good finish. You could view that as a concern, but it's also a sign that he is due for some regression at Darlington, especially when you consider the fact that he is so young. You know, eventually things are going to click together for him, and he'll put together a full race, and that very well could be on Wednesday this week. So, Byron is very similar to Johnson, where he has a massive floor, but also has a path to a, a, a really good day. And I think that even, you know, some chance to win here, which you don't often get out of drivers uh, who have a salary of $9,000. So Byron, I know there's been some tough luck here, and I know the Rex can be frustrating, but he is a good driver. He is in great equipment. He's starting at the back. He checks every single box that he wants. So for $9,000, he, like Johnson, someone we should build around, even though we know he will be popular. Again, the popularity, it doesn't necessarily matter when it just makes all that much sense. William Byron's been racing well, as you mentioned, all the success at Darlington. He hasn't converted it yet. And that regression word, in this case, it's positive regression, where things are just going to fall his way. He's not going to get into a wreck. His car is not going to fall apart. He's just going to finish well. And that's what we expect from William Byron, or at least we hope, on Wednesday. Up next, it's Chris Busher, who is priced at $7,300, a little bit cheaper than some of the drivers we've talked about. He's starting in the 32nd spot. What do you like about Chris Busher on Wednesday? Yeah, the first four drivers we discussed, Greg, were all really good on Sunday, and Chris Busher sucked. He was the guy that Johnson ran into leading to that wreck, and the reason that Johnson ran into him is because Busher was slower and about to get lapped. So that's a pretty major concern, and Busher didn't get a lot better as that race went along. But part of the reason he didn't get better could have been because of the damage he sustained when Johnson ran to the back of him, which may have slowed his car down. So that's a concern. Uh, and maybe you look at this and want to shy away from Chris Buescher as a result of that. And I think that's a very valid concern to bring up with Chris Buescher as well. But he is starting 32nd. That's, that is a good thing for us because it gives us additional flexibility with where he finishes. You don't need to finish as well to pay off for DFS 
if you're starting the back. So a lot of flexibility here with Chris Buescher. We've also seen his teammate, Ryan Newman, ran really well on Sunday. He was actually up in the top 10 at times, had a really solid day. And now they can take the knowledge they gained from Newman's race and apply that to Chris Buescher's car for Wednesday, which will be a new car, which is a blessing for him. That is to be sure. So the car for Buescher should be better on Wednesday. I also don't have a lot of questions about the talent of Chris Bosher because we've seen him do well at Darlington in the past, even when he was in bad equipment in past years. He had a top 14 average running position here, both in 2018 and 2019, and his equipment, at least in theory, is now better than it was for those races. So he is risky due to the poor performance on Sunday, and I think that that is worth noting. He is not as big of a staple as we should view guys like Byron and Johnson as being. But I think that with Chris Buescher having had success at, past, at the pass in, the, in Darlington, given that Newman was pretty good on Sunday and with Buescher starting so far back, I'm going to go back to the well. It bit me pretty bad on Sunday as I had a lot of Buescher then as well. But I think he makes sense once again. It is kind of risky, but I'm willing to take that risk because of the positives that Buescher provides. Busher is a little risky given how he performed over the weekend, but the average running position is actually pretty good for Chris Busher in historically speaking here at Darlington. He's in a new car, new equipment that's ideally going to be better. They learn from their mistakes here on Sunday, and hopefully that leads to a good race for Chris Busher, or at least for Jim, who's going to have him back in his lineups. One last driver we want to mention, and you were all over this one here, Jim, over the weekend, and, and that's Tyler Reddick. You really liked him uh, and his teammate, Austin Dillon. He's priced at $6,700 on Wednesday. He's going to start from the 14th position. I believe he finished seventh uh, on Sunday. Reddick drove well, and he's still priced relatively cheaply again. I think you have to like Reddick uh, once again at Darlington on Wednesday. Yeah, this is one of those situations where we got a little bit lucky, Greg, because the salaries for this race came out before the end of the race on Sunday. So they didn't know how good Tyler Reddick was going to be, but there were times in that race where he had the best car on the field. You mentioned that he finished seventh. That is despite the fact that he had a pit road violation and had to restart at the back of the pack about midway through. So you kind of have to wonder where Tyler Reddick would have finished had he not had that violation. He did wind up finishing seventh, which means he will start 14th. And yes, that does mean that he is starting a little bit higher than the other drivers we have discussed so far. But he had a 13th place average running position on Sunday, and I think that kind of undersells what he did as well. And we've seen him do this at Darlington before in the Xfinity Series, which is the AAA of NASCAR. Uh, he had a top three finish there in both 2018 and 2019 in that series. So probably not a fluke. I think that that makes him really interesting, even though he will start 14th. I think that he is a juice to finish top 10 once again, as he did on Sunday. He didn't get a top 10 finish out of a driver at $6,700. I don't really care as much about the place differential upside. I just want the finishing points, and Reddick is a pretty good bet to get those. Now, if you do want some increased flexibility and want to go with a driver starting further back so you can have a little bit of leeway, I think that Cole Custer fits that really well. He is starting 22nd, and he would work. If you want to go back to Ricky Stenhouse Jr., he's starting 40th. In theory, you could do that. I probably won't, but I understand why you would want to due to the place differential upside. But with Tyler Reddick, the equipment is good, the talent is great, and he's starting far enough back where you do have a bit of leeway. So you have options in this range, specifically with Cole Custer. Not going to mention Stenhouse again, but I think that Tyler Reddick is worth the risk at $6,700 given the upside he possesses. Cole Custer, a legitimate option. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., not really. <laughs> but Tyler Reddick certainly is. He may be starting 14th, but the history is, is really good here. And, and the talent, it's also real. There's a lot to like with Tyler Reddick certainly coming, to, coming into his own. He's had a lot of success at Darlington. So let's take advantage on Wednesday. There you have it. Those are the picks for the next cup race. Wednesday with NASCAR just moving and moving. Something for us to watch. Get excited about and play a little DFS with. Jim, we appreciate the time, man. Have fun. Yeah, thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. Hopefully there is no rain on Wednesday because it looks like things may be a little bit dicey there. But uh, either way, we should get a race in at some point, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Enjoy your week, and hopefully I'll talk to you again soon, Greg. Absolutely. I certainly will. Rain or shine, we're here for you. For Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Enjoy the race, everybody. Have some fun, and stay safe.